Awo. Shalom again. This is your brother Wendem Yadon, and we don't think that we'll be able to show the video clip right now. So we're going to get right into the teaching of the Adis Zemin, and why we call this the Adis Zemin 2012. Well, first of all, there is the fact that we're coming to a galactic uh, um, solar system, kind of a universal alignment coming up this year. And in fact, there's been some, on, on, the, on the whole cipher and circle of the heavens, there's been a lot of wobble. And some of these um, strange weather patterns, plus the interference of men and people, um, with men and people and certain technology, which is out of this world. In other words, there's certain alien technology that's on the face of the earth. But let's first, first of all, put it into biblical, in, into biblical context, and that's what we want to begin off this particular lecture. Because this lecture began with a, a particular revelation concerning what we have in front of you right here, which is the. Adis Zemin, concerning the Adis Zemin. What is the Adis, Adis Zemin? Adis means new. In the Afro-Shemitic, in the Amharic, coming from the Gutas, in the Gutas it's Hadis, 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 as we have in the Hebrew um, Hadasha as well. Now, Adis, Adis right here means it means new. A D S. It's a very phonetical language. A D S. Adis. 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 Zemin. 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 Now what's interesting is that this both of these words are Afro Shemitic. That means they are Gutas and they are also Hebraic. In other words, what, what, here's what we bring and we bridge this so-called uh, artificial and, and false and imagined um, uh, gap between the Hebraic and the Shemitic and its Afro roots and the Gutas, the Ethiopic language, the Gutas and the Kings and Hark is a very vital and important link. And we're going to connect this also with this particular period of time and this particular dispensation. Really, instead of calling it just a particular time, even the word zemin can be interpreted as age. Age, the word zemin. Let's bring this up right here, um, the IOTA software. And let's just go over zemin again. We'll come back to Acts, um, actually, Ibrawian or Hebrews. And we're going to look up the Zemin here. And we're going to see if we can find the Hebraic um, of Zemin, of Zemin as well. Um, let's just go through this right here. All the days, it uses the word days here, it uses Yom. But if we go to Zemin or Zeman, we also have a similar, a similar context of um, Zeman. Sometimes it's translated as days, but if we can get the word here, they use Shana here in the Hebrew. So we have a very diligent comparison from the royal Amharic of the Metaf Kedus of His Majesty's of His Majesty's Bible, along with the King James Version. This is also Yom as well. And see if it's connected with uh, Yom. Okay, well, Zemin, we'll, we'll, we'll find that within the Hebraic. We did find it in the Hebrew previously. But all of this can be quite easily, quite easily, proven from the scriptures and through a diligent study. This is why it says to study and to show ourselves approved. We are to study and to show ourselves approved to God as workman that need not be ashamed, 
rightly dividing the word of the word of truth. Now, sometimes the word zemin actually is is placed under the word for for world or for or for for age. Usually, it's the alam. The alam, which is the word for an age, actually it's a literal word for, it's the literal word for world, for a world. So there's interesting phrases that we have in the Hebraic, and then when we check these, because it has world, so here it has teba, which is more referring to the earth in this sense. But if we get, get our Strong's Concordance, and I think it's on the Zaman, get our Strong's Concordance, perhaps we'll go to, let's bring up the online right here for a moment and go to one of our um, favorite Bible links and... There's much in this particular lecture that we want to share, but let's just first prove this right here, Blue Letter Bible. Just once we see the correspondence between the the Hebraic and the Ethiopic, and then through the Ethiopic, which is a living language, don't let them lie to you and deceive you that Ethiopic is a is a dead language. It's only dead to those who do not have that knowledge, but, but, but learning and knowledge is like light and illumination. Now, <clears throat> in speaking of the Adi Zemin, we must recall, while this, is, while this is loading up here, let's go back to our presentation here. While speaking of the Adi Zemin, we must recall that His Imperial Majesty, Adamawi Han Selassie, when still a prince, as the Prince Aras, Teferi, and this is actually also another inspiration right here. Now there's a particular image here, and this is this work here we want you to take a look at. And we, and we begin to see this more and more in its real prophetic sense. Seeing some of the predictions now concerning 2012 in a particular line. And now some of the brothers and sisters might recall that we had, uh, that we had um, dealt with uh, the syzygy not too long ago. So let's look at this image right here now. This image right here, do you know what this is? Do you, are you able to recognize what this is right here? This is Africa. But of course some would say it's on its side. But we have to remember that there's a different sort of directionality in space. And the Earth is currently going through a very interesting um, a rotation, a, a very interesting spin and a rotation that the Earth is uh, currently going through. And this is one of the, the vids that we wanted to share with you, but we were unable to open it here. So what we're going to do is still continue with this lecture, then hopefully be able to put some of it together in the presentation on DVD because we expect to probably go into this particular subject matter on the different levels. First of all, just get deal for basic cursory idea, share with ones what is the inspiration behind this particular lecture and teaching of the Adis Zemin 2012. First of all, Adis Zemin is the Ethiopic and the Royal Amharic or the King's Amharic for new Adis Zemin, and Zemin means an age. It means a period of, for lack of a better word, a period of time, but that time is, is, is more of an indefinite period of time. Now, to give an example of how Zemin might be used, certain Ethiopians might say during the Mengista, Mengistu Haila Mariam Zemin, during his particular regime or his particular age, the particular time when he said, uh, when the Derg was in power, when the Derg was ruling. 
So when we use this sort of word, we can also equate it with either one's lifetime, such as a great patriarch or a, a king or a particular civilization as well. So the word zemin does not have a, a particular time as we count time. This is, this is a very interesting thing because, remember, the, the heavens is a clock. The heavens is a clockwork as well. And from the very beginning, in Genesis chapter 1, around verse uh, 14, if we go to Genesis chapter chapter 1, verse 14, we find something very interesting about the, the heavenly arrangement. Now, I know ones, ones may have been told certain things by their pastors and preachers concerning so-called astrology, but we're not talking about so-called mundane astrology. What we are talking about is the Almighty's Word and the reality. And right here we have verse uh, 14 where it says, now, the translation of this part right here from the King Zimharic, according to the King James right here, and God and the sustainer, Bamarinya Egziabeher, which in the Hebrew is the Elohim, said, let there be lights, or Burhanat, this word right here, Burhanat, let there be illuminations, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to do what? To divide the day from the night to divide the day from the night. And let them be for what? For what? Signs. The key word. Malikatoch. Malikatoch. For signs. And it says for seasons. Notice the word for seasons. And for days and for years. So what we have here is the Almighty's calendar or calculation of time. So when we, we look at the heavens... And you have to notice how we as the children of Jah, as the children of the Father, have been disorientated in this 400-plus year experience, this past dispensation, how we have been disorientated from nature, from the land, and from our relationship with the Almighty and with the heavens and the earth. So the first relationship is with the Almighty. And then when one has a relationship with the Almighty, one receives the instruction, one hears, shema, one has a simma, mesmat, a hearing of the word. And in the hearing of the word, do we receive the instructions in Torah or the orit. So here we find in Genesis chapter, chapter 1, verse 14, it is speaking to us of the Almighty's computation or calculation of time, of time, no clocks, no watches, so forth and so on. So it breaks down these three particular words right here. It says, let them be for what? For signs. And what is the sign? It says right here, it defines signs, it says as an oat, 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 probably from 225 in the sense of what? Appearing. I hope you're seeing this right here. In the sense of in the sense of what? In the sense of appearing. It's a signal, literally or figuratively, as a flag, a beacon, a monument, an omen, a prodigy, evidence. Overstand this right here, this word right here. So the heavens is an evidence but we're so disorientated with these false, these false stars and celebrities and, and the, the lights and distractions down here in the big city life of Babylon that we cannot see the Almighty's clockwork. So we really don't know what time it is because we don't focus on his 
on God given, on John given, the Almighty's given signs, which he clearly states right here, are the heavens, which is very clearly stated right here in Genesis or Rit Zet Fitret Raf An Kuta Asara Arat, where it says Egizia Viharim Ale Kenina Lailitina Yeleu Zen Burhanat Vesamait Afer Yunu Lemelikotoch Le Zemmenoch Le Illetata Le Ametatim Yunu and Elohim Ha Elohim said let there be lights, illuminations in the firmament. That's the firmament, what we call so-called space. There's actually a firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, the periods of illumination from the periods of unillumination, the period of enlightenment, the day from the night, the darkness, the unillumination, and let them be for what? For signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Now, this first word, signs, is interesting, both in the Hebrew and in the royal Amharic. It's very interesting, but the meaning, the basic root meaning, still remains one and the same. It's a mark. It's a miracle. It's a sign, but it's also an ensign. It's also a token. So what we are witnessing, even presently, and what is expected to come to pass hereafter as we now go into so-called 2012 and we approach December 21st, 2012, we are moving into a new age. We're moving into a new dispensation. And see, this is a sign of it that was given to us in this ministry, the Line of Jewish Society, several years ago. And let's see if we can bring up the, the actual flyer. And it's contained on our website, www.lojsociety.org. If you go to the study page, you'll find that on the study page, we have some of the um, previously published um, pamphlets and articles and tracts and some of the basic teachings and, and, and proclamation and preachings that we were passing out previously over the past more than 20, 10 to 20 or so roughly years. Now, this is the fly right here from a magazine or a publication called Kishate Burhan. Well, Kishate also means the revealing of the Burhan. Now, when we connect this with the Adis Zemin, of Negus and Neges, when we connect this with the, with the new age of his imperial majesty, it is quite significant. Now, on this particular flyer, which was published roughly 19, um, maybe nine, between 93 and 94 or so, I don't know which uh, revision this particular one is, but you can go to the website and you'll find this in Kishate Burhan. And there's a lot of information on here, but the part that we want to pay most attention to is this right over here, is this particular, is understanding this revelation that was given to us. And this revelation that was given to us, this is Africa right here, but from a different, from a different angle. This is the sun. This is the sun of this particular solar system right here. Now we're going to go into this in a larger review in a larger review let's let's bring up one of the related um, images where one can see this a little more full and a little more developed right here in this particular presentation right here let's bring this up okay now if you see this carefully you see, this is the Hebrew Yad or Jad, Yod, Yad, which means a hand. It's related to the hand. The, the Hebrew, or it's also called the flame letter. Now, this right here, of course, you know, this is the so-called six-pointed star. Now, of course, you probably have heard a lot about the six-pointed star. And some are even putting forward that it is evil. It's like saying the color red is, is, is evil. 
you know, it, it's those kind of insanities. It's like saying fire. Is fire evil or is fire good? Well, of course, it's all dependent on how the fire is used or how it may be misused. Now, let's bring up another image right here so we can compare something and briefly or basically explain this because the time is short. And see, our time is short, or the time is short rather, not our time, but the time is short because of the heavenly signs. You see, because the heavenly signs and this alignment, see, we're going through this period of an alignment. So the question is, are we in proper alignment or are we out of alignment? This is what Shabbat or Sabbath keeping is all about. It's all about that alignment. It's bringing us into that spiritual, that spiritual alignment. Now, over here, this says Yod. In the Hebrew, it's known as Yod. In Hebrew, it's known as Yemen. Yamin or Yemen. Yemen, as in Bin Yamin, the son of the right hand, my right hand. In the Ethiopic, as Yemen, the right hand or it's the fist. Is the black power fist, and you can see this right here, the black power fist, which is upraised. Now, when you look at this in older Ethiopic, now this is the letter Ya, but the first order would be this circle, and the circle would be on a straight standing pole. You see, this is to, this is to the left here, and this is because this is partially stylized. But when you look at the ancient Ethiopic hieroglyph for this symbol, for the lack of a better description, almost like a lollipop in a sense, a circle on a pole, almost in the sense of saying a head on a stick. But really, the real symbol is it's a upraised fist. It's that black power fist. You understand? So the fear of the black planet is real. There's really a fear of a black planet because when you understand how the earth is realigning itself, as you get as they say, deeper into the knowledge of this from an Ethiopic perspective. This is what's being suppressed out there for the so-called conspiracies and 2011 and Mayan prophecies that we have, even through the Ethiopic book of Enoch, a firm foundation. But in this time, it's not just to watch and wait, but it's to prepare. So now, this symbol here, the six-pointed star, we want to show this right here. This diagram right here. Now, as you see, there's a trinity above. Once I've asked us concerning this, concerning the, the trinity and what we've been seeking to do in our teachings and the Bible-based studies, the Torah portion readings and, and the supplemental teachings is to go into the scriptures and go into our Ethiopic um, art and facts and prove the half of the story that has been elsewhere suppressed. Now, there's a trinity above. The trinity above is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is pictured by this right here. Now, there's a trinity below, which is the reflective image, when it says that man in Genesis was made in the image and after the likeness. So, in the image and after the likeness, that, that so-called inverted or downward triangle is the spirit, or some would say the psyche, the mind here should be better, the soul or the psyche, the suke, and the body. So we have spirit, soul, and body, or spirit, mind, in the sense of psyche and body. Now, when this is brought into union or harmony, it's the, that sixth wing. You remember the sixth wing where it says that they flew those who were around the Father's throne, that they had those six wings? As we can see right here, it's a six-pointed star. The connection now with those angelic beings, you understand? And this also connects some of the areas of the Gospels where Christ spoke about the angels in the end-time manifestation, that there are many different orders of angels, and there are good angels, or tob, or melaic, but there are also kufu or evil angels. You understand? And that's the part about the fallen angels. Now, 
what we have on the face of the planet Earth is a, is a reflection of the spiritual warfare. But there's also a beautiful alignment that is happening, that is occurring at this one and the same time. Now, this here touches on the great, the great pyramid geometry or the geometry of the great pyramid. Now, of course, this is a lot of so-called geometry right here, but once you understand and once you comprehend the basic symbolic logic, the meanings and the reference, the relationship, and see the scriptures, the scriptures contain all of this. The Holy Scriptures contain all of this. And you can see some of the, the Hebraic, the Hebraic-like letters right here. And this is also represents a particular alignment too. With the moon right here. You don't see the sun in view, but it represents a particular alignment. And this is part of the mystery of the circle and the square. But the circle and the square both being 360 degrees mathematically is one and the same. So what do we really have here? You know, since that's that's part of that's part of the the truth which this is like a kindergarten. This is like a kindergarten of. Now let's bring this forward right here. So the Ya or the Yod or the Jad, the Yad or the Jad is very, very important. It's the first letter of the Hebrew name of Yah as in Kumbaya. Not come by here, Lord. No, no, come by Kumbaya. Yah. Our ancestors knew the name of the God of Israel as Yah. After they uh, traumatized us for X amount of years and put us under a lot of um, mind control, some forgot, but as soon as they were able to read or hear the Bible read, it quickened. It quickened that spirit. This is one of the reasons why they wanted to forbid the Bible and, and the teaching of, of English, the teaching of the language to the so-called slaves. It's part of the woolly lynchism. But just to connect the fact that our ancestors knew Yah, even in their Negro spirituals, which they sung before they even knew the Babylonian or the Anglo-American so-called English language, and before they were privy to the white man's so-called religion, this, these were the Negro spirituals because they knew who they were. But 400 plus years, a lot has gone on, and many of our people are in a dream or a sleeping state. Now, there's a big connection between the Alem, you understand, between the, the Alem, the world, and the Hillam. Halame. Halame means to dream. The Hillam is a dream state. Now, what is reality? You understand? What is reality? And, and what is the sleep state? And what is the dream state? And what sort of reality and state of reality are we living in presently? And are we, and are we conscious are we really aware? Are we rooted and are we grounded? Are we prepared for the times to come when there will be this alignment? So this particular image right here that we have somewhat illuminated here with additional, with additional um, notation originally had this down here. It said that the sun, S-U-N, slash S-O-N, the sun of the source, that is to say the true God, the source being born from the Abba, Father, Imma, Mother, the Father and Mother. Now, it's interesting when we look into even um, Joseph, if we look into Joseph in the Bible. And Joseph in the Bible, he was a what? A dreamer. He was a dreamer of dreams. And he saw one particular vision where the sun, moon, and the stars was bowing down to him. And this was interpreted even by his family and siblings to be his mother and father and his, um, what was it, 11, 11 brothers bowing down to him. So even there in the first book of the Bible, in Barashit, you know, or 
Barasit Orit Zafitret, known as the Torah of the Genesis, or some say the genealogy of Isis, that we find even in that first book of the Bible, this connection with the heavens and personified types, the sun as the father source and the moon as the feminine or the mother source and the earth as the child. So now we have the earth now is moving into a galactic, a, a solar, a cosmic alignment, a cosmic alignment. Now, what does, what does this all mean? You understand this means that, first of all, as the Wizard of Oz, in the movie Wizard of Oz, they say, well, we're not, in, we're not in Kansas anymore. You understand? We're in a truly new world. And see, this new world is beyond the so-called just new world order of men and people and uh, regressive alien um, or we can say demonic entities who are interfacing and overlapping with certain um, um, Satanist accomplices among the men and the people. But we're moving into an alignment of great significance. Now, we link this alignment of great significance with the Adis Zemin. And let's bring this up again, the Adis Zemin. You understand the Adis Zemin or the New Age. Now, the New Age, you see the date right there is November 2nd, 1930. Now, why is November 2nd, 1930 important? Because that was the coronation of Christ and his kingly character of the anointed king of kings upon the throne of David. The throne of David is not any ordinary throne. The throne of David, according to the Bible, is the throne of Jehovah, is the throne of the Almighty God. Now, who sat on this particular throne, and who is it that was coronated on this particular day? Well, of course, it was Kedamawi Haile Selassie. Now, the coronation of his imperial majesty has great significance and even greater resonance as we are moving into this cosmic alignment, to, in this cosmic, some can say, syzygy, the erection of the Holy Grand Cross in the heavens. And it is whether men and people, and mainly us brothers and sisters, whether we are in tune or out of tune. See, here, here's the connection right here. Whether we are in tune with the heavens, with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, and through Christ. Now, Christ is that bridge that now brings these two parts together. It is Christ. It is the true and living Christ. It is the Word that becometh flesh that brings these two parts or these two halves, these two as one. Because he is, according to the scriptures, he is that mediator between God and man. It is Christ who is that mediator between God and man. Now, this is extremely extremely significant because the teaching of his imperial majesty is all about the testimony and the template and the example the living example of Christ based on his word of truth as we would call it based upon the Bible but the living Bible and what we have witness in his imperial majesty and through his imperial majesty is that living witness is that living testimony to Christ in his kingly character that is suppressed 
that is ignored, and this is why our role and responsibility to minister the good news, to learn, to learn of him, to come into alignment with him in spirit and in truth, and to minister this gospel, this good news of the King of Kings and his Christ as we are approaching into this new day, into this new time, into this 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 alignment that some call the dark rift. You've probably heard it mentioned that this particular alignment is the dark rift. But let us ask ourselves exactly why is this alignment called the dark rift and what is it about this that evokes such strong and even to some degree uh, negative reaction or emotion? Well, first of all, in order to understand, as they say, what's going to happen in the end, we need to understand, well, what happened in the beginning. Now, this right here is some of the speculation concerning um, Nibiru and the 12th planet and what some have borne witness to and based on all the evidence it is right and exact was a collision was, was a collision with the planet earth now this is a very small picture here but we're going to do our best to try to try to enlarge enlargement which was a collision see there was said to be a collision you understand because of such alignment some say in the sense of the events that we are witnessing and this age that we are going through currently is basically a cipher of that which is that which was already so it says that which is you understand there's nothing new what is it under the sun but now these events are not just under the sun these events involve the whole galaxy the whole universe now many would try to discount the significance of this particular alignment that we are going through but my brothers and sisters, it's a time for spiritual and just soul preparement. Soul preparement. That that um, diagram that we gave before. Let's put some of this down. Let's get that diagram that we we can touch on this and go into some more detail about this. But this diagram right here, this alignment. This alignment right here, it's about us coming into alignment. That's when the Bible says to not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing, you understand, by the renewing of our minds. Not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed. And this is why the commandment of God and the testimony of Jesus Christos is, is fundamental. It's fundamental to learn because what we're moving is to the eternity. We're moving into the eternity. And we often give this as a demonstration right here, though we've explained it elsewhere, and we probably will have to explain it again. This right here is the, the spiral. You see how the universe spirals. You understand know, how the universe spirals. Now imagine we're coming to an alignment which would be like a cross. You understand? Know, now when you look at it from the side view, it's like this. Now if we look at the Amharic, when we go to the Amharic and to the Ethiopic, this is called Zelalem. Zelalem. Zelalem means to skip, and the Alem is a world. You understand know, a world. We can liken it to a star system or a planet or the alamat to a universe. Now, when this skips, when this spins, this is what you're seeing before you. 
you're seeing a visual image of what human beings have called the eternity or the forever under the Ethiopic Lezele Olem or the Zelalem, the eternity. You see, so as above, so below. If there is an alignment occurring with the heavens, then surely, according to scriptures, and let's bring up that scripture again, surely according to scriptures, and, and here we have and here we have Genesis one and fourteen, it clearly says that Elohim Buruku blessed be he said, Let there be lights or illumination in the firmament or the space of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for what? For signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Now, most of us are very much ignorant of these heavenly signs. At best, we have just a rudimentary knowledge of it. So it behooves us, especially scripturally, to become acquainted with the relationship of one with the other. Otherwise, it's impossible to understand and to comprehend many of the prophetic and even parabolic areas of Scripture. Remember what Christ said? Christ said, if, if you do not understand the earthly things, if you don't over the earthly examples that are given, how are you to overstand the, the heavenly? So, so the earth is that first school. But as we graduate and we grow, we begin to recognize that the knowledge of the heavens is also key and is also fundamental to comprehending the word of God in spirit and in truth. So here we have another type of example, and around this circle, this, see, this is, this, is, this is, when we square this properly, this actually would become an eight-pointed uh, eight um, star or two squares. We can envision two squares. This is just the basic right here with the mundane or the earthly cross because there's also a cross in the heavens. So when we're speaking about an alignment of the solar system, the galaxy, with the universe. This is, this is very, very significant. This is very significant. Both physically, of course, physically it's very significant, but even more so is it very significant spiritually. So when we, once again, look at this particular, here's where we begin. You understand? Know it's conforming ourselves in Christ. In fact, when we get a chance, we'll update this particular, um, this particular art right here um, and put Christ right here because Christ is important right here because he's that mediator between God, between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Ab, the Weld, and the Memphis Caduce, and man, and Yesolich, and the Son of Man. And man bringing his spirit, his mind, or his psyche, his soul, and his body into alignment. And now when he brings it into that alignment, this is what is formed. This is why this star is really important. You understand? This is part of the, the, for lack of a better word, the mystery of this star in its relationship to the scriptures and to the truth of God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Adonai Yeshua Ha Moshiach. So the Adi Zemin and the 2012, let's, let's return to this portion of our, of our lecture, the Adi Zemin and the 2012. What about the Adi Zemin? So here we're going we're, we're gonna to go to a portion of our, a portion of scripture. Let's go to a portion of scripture. Okay, so when we put in to the search engine, let's put into the search engine uh, Zemin. 
And let's limit our search to the New Testament over here and press my Phalegia, the search, and let's see what comes up. Now, there's 78 in the New Testament, 78 mentions of Zemin. For example, Herod's Zemin, you understand, in the time that was seen. But the Metades is a particular phraseology that is used, the Metades. Here we go, Metades Zemin. Now, we find it in what a Ibrawiyan, or to the Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 9 to 10. So we're going to go into this for a moment right here. And here we have the verse. Let's bring this down a little bit. Okay. Here we have the verse where it says, What a Ibrawiyan mi'raf zetain. So get your Bibles, your pen and paper. This is very significant. This is This is where we now are going to explain scripturally the importance of the new age. Now the new age, we see the new age as actually coming to pass when that man child born as Lij Tefari became Aras Tefari when he came to that particular headship as Aras Tefari and we're speaking of Aras Tefari Mekonin who we know as Kadamawi Haila Selassie. Just one more example. Remember the spiral we showed you of the universe? Okay, let's bring this up. The spiral we showed you, this is kind of a small picture here, but we probably can zoom this up a little bit so you can see this better. Okay, here. All right. Now, if you notice, and this is how nature, nature is wise. Nature is often the netaru, the int, uh, the netaru is often likened to the wisdom or the or the mother. Remember what Christ said, what the Moshiach said, the Moshi. He said that wisdom is justified of her children. And remember, the word is to repent, to think differently, and to have a change of mind, to think differently. This change of mind begins by thinking differently. Have you noticed the link between a the cross section of a seashell right here with the DNA, the DNA model, and with the spiral of the galaxy? See, the ancients, who we think were primitive in the false connotation that they were backward, were actually much more advanced because they understood this wisdom this wisdom which has been lost. This is why even the book of uh, Ye Johannes Rai, the vision of Yah's grace, known as the book of Revelation in the Kings of Horek, why it even says, let him who has, what, wisdom. Here is wisdom. You understand? Here is the wisdom. And one who has that, that understanding, one who has that mind, that new mind, that, 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 that mind that thinks differently, not in the so-called natural, the mundane, seclorum sense, not into this, this world that we've been born, a fallen consciousness, but now has been born again. You understand? Born again. And we give you this example once again. This is an example of what we call the God-man. You understand? Now, this God-man, this is God. This is symbolic of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as one. And man, man has these, these three aspects that really form him at the root. Man has spirit. Man has soul or psyche, suke, which is often translated as mind. And man has the body, which is the carbon organic structure. Now, when these are brought into equilibrium and alignment in and through Christ, in and through that consciousness, then there's an alignment through the Word with the Father. Now, see, this is a step-by-step -step process, brothers and sisters. It's, it's not like an overnight, a snap-of-your-finger process 
You know what I'm saying? But, but, but the growth in consciousness is like practice. Practice perfects. This is why the Moshiach said, be ye perfect. Christ said, be ye perfect even as your Father who art in heaven is perfect. But we have to comprehend that and, and understand this, that there was a certain dispensation, a certain time given for the expiration as well as the execution of certain matters in the earth. And this is all for our good, even though many of these things may appear to us in our spiritual ignorance to be evil. As we learn and grow, we get to recognize that there are evil forces, but if we would maintain on the way, in the way, in the truth, and in the life of Yeshua HaMoshiach, we would be more than overcomers. And this is the greatness of the testimony of Kedamawi Haile Selassie. This is the greatness of the testimony of his imperial majesty. So the coming of and the coronation of his imperial majesty actually connects with this particular verse here. And this is the connection with the Adi Zemin as we go to um, Hebrews chapter 9, verses 9 to 10. So we're there. Okay, let's go through this right here. So Hebrews chapter 9 says, Yehim le'ahunu gizeh mesaleinu in the zihim mebana mesawait yikarbalu in the zihim iska metadesa zemin deresa yetadaragu sile migibna sile metetima sile liu liu a metat ebima yemihonu ye siga sharaato chibicha nawuna picha nacha wuna yemiya meloko wuna behlina fitsum liadargut aichilum now, the translation, King James here, that we have is the translation now of His Majesty's Amharic, is King James. King James says, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect. In other words, in the... In the old sense of so-called religion or even ones might have called it spirituality but more in the sense of religion and see his majesty's teaching on religion and spirituality that man did certain services and it's through these services that he thought he could become perfect but it says here that this pertaining, as pertaining to conscience, as pertaining to conscience, the conscience of the Helena is a different matter because it says which stood only in meats and, and drinks and that which one ate and that which one drunk and in diverse washing in the different religious Levitical ablutions. We can even say with baptisms as well, and in cardinal, which is fleshy ordinances, that which dealt with the body or the outer consciousness or the outer sense of man, the physical sense of man, imposed on them until the time of reformation. Now, here's the key right here. These things were imposed, it says, until the time of Reformation. Now, what is this metades zemin? What is this time? Remember what we said that, that the word adis, adis in the royal Amharic from the Ethiopic hadis, the hadis, and we have in the Hebrew like hadasha, means to, to make new, become new, to treat as new. Also, it can mean to repair. That's also another interesting sense, and many of the words have um, more than one nuance of meaning. And this is where the, the, the spirit is like slang in a sense. They spoke in a certain idiom, a certain type of speech. 
It's like we speak or people nowadays speak text messaging and everything else. If someone were to come from the past, they would be utterly confused. The same way ones read the scriptures without the context. And this is one of the important things to do in our studies to understand, to be able to explain anything and everything pertaining to the verse, verses, or chapters that we are reading. Now, here there's a footnote. Now, it says a symbol, a type, a parable, the misale. It speaks of the baptism, but the key thing is the reformation, the metades, and this time of reformation, this age of reformation, this zemin of reformation, putting in order. This is all about the putting in order. So now we connect this new age properly with the King of Kings, with Haile Selassie, the coronation, the Adis Zemin, November 2nd, 1930, Anno Domini. Remember Christ when he went into the synagogue in, was it Nazareth? And he opened up the Torah scroll, that Shabbat, and he read, and he read up to the comma in the verse. Now, he said to proclaim the what? Acceptable year of the Lord, November 2nd, 1930, brothers and sisters. 1930 was the acceptable year of the Lord. This is the coronation of the King of Kings or Christ in his kingly character according to the seed of David. This is the returned Moshiach, the returned anointed, the returned Christ. This is why the prophetic word says that Christ would re return, they say, it would be likened to a thief in the night where only those who were awake and aware and willing and ready to receive. In other words, they were prepared. So there was a generation that was prepared for the King of Kings. And those are they whom we speak of honorably and lovingly, those brothers and sisters who went before us and in the face of all sorts of persecutions, they bore witness faithfully to the King of Kings, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, to the Judeo-Christian truth and spirituality of Ethiopia, as well as our divine heritage. Now, here when we speak of the Reformation, we mean the putting in order, the setting things straight, the setting things right. You see, when we look at um, Caduce uh, Mikael, he has scales in his hands. You see, he has the scales in his hands. And right here, this is a likeness of the reptilian, the reptilian who are being judged by that sword. See, the glistening of the sword, it's like a two-edged sword. It cuts when it goes in, it cuts when it comes out. And now we have, this is a symbol of Mikael, similar to Georgis in its basic type. Now we have the one who now has overcome the king of kings, earth's rightful ruler. Now, we need to understand biblical prophecies because many, when we say that he is Christ in his kingly character, because they have a wrong Gentile misreading of the Gospels and don't understand the true Hebraic Judeo-Christian concept or the, the context. See, there's a context which is... is, is is, is millennia old because these are eternal principles and eternal truths. So the Reformation is the time of setting things right, which occurred at Christ's first coming when he fulfilled all the shadows of the Old Testament that a new covenant might replace the old. So what does his majesty testify to? He testifies to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, Getachina, Medhanatachin, Jesus Christos, in spirit and in truth. According to the spirituality and the truth of the fact that he's an Ethiopian, a black man. So this is what it means when it says in spirit and in the true manifestation, in the, even in the ethnic 
or the racial sense, reversing the 400-plus year curse that was upon the lost sheep for disobedience. So he's our kinsman redeemer in and through the name of Yeshua HaMoshiach. So this is different from the restoration now we have. There's another restoration, which is an axe of the apostles. So we need to go to the other restoration, which is an axe of the apostles. So we still have, we still, we still have some time. All right. Um, let's see if we can get into the, the, there's a restoration, which is an axe of the apostles. So we have, a reformation, so that's now fulfilled in Yeshua, HaMoshiach. For we have in Hebrews 9, chapter 9 to verse 10. Now we're going to go to Acts of the Apostles 3 and 21, which, according to the scriptures, is to occur. And we say, behold, the King of Kings and his Christ, it has occurred in the second, what's known as the second coming, or the return Messiah, or the black Messiah, whom they have tried desperately to stop the rise, stop the rise in the consciousness of the half of the story that hasn't been told until now. So now let's go to Acts of the Apostles 3, Acts of the Apostles chapter 3, verse 21. And we're going to now see what is the difference. We're going to see a difference in time. There was a time of restoration, the Metades. And now in 3 and 21, let's go to 3 and 21, bring up 3 and 21. So now we go to chapter 3, and let's go to verse 21. And here we go, right around here. Okay, here we go. So verse, um, okay, let's actually go from verse 19 and 20, all right? Mesama Awalaman says, Kedus hadu amlak, in gdi kagita fit ye met nanat zemen, in dita met alachu, ask edmom le nante ye merat awin, i Jesus Christosin in dia lika lachu, Chat ya tachu ye demesis ye demesis zen nisha gubu tamelasu. It says, Repent ye therefore, repent ye, have a change of mind, a metanoia. Think differently, think differently, think differently. You see that? Okay, let's move that over. Repent ye therefore, think differently. Therefore, think differently and be converted and be converted and be turned around from the straight way, from going astray, instead of turning away from the word of life, from the true and living water of the spiritual matrix, being born again. The matrix is the womb that your sins, you're missing the mark, may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence. There will be times of refreshing that will come, notice where, where from? From the presence of Adonai, from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send, notice it says he shall do what? Send Jesus Christos, which before was preached to you. So it says he will send whom? He will send Jesus Christos which was preached from when? From before he will send for you. Whom, it says in verse 21, It says, whom the heaven, whom the heavens, the same heavens, must receive until the times of restitution. So speaking about there's a, there's a time of what? Restitution of all things, which God, which Ha Elohim, Buruku, 
blessed be he, have spoken by the mouth, the opening of the mouth of all his holy prophets, of all the Kedusan and the Beatu, since the what? The world began. Now that's the question. What does world mean? And what does beginning of a world mean in this particular context? Because, see, there's a lot of um, misconceptions that might make sense in a modern Gentile way, but scripturally is without merit, is without context. And unfortunately, there are many sincere Christians who are believing those half-truths through a Gentile Western mis understanding. Now, here in this particular recovery Bible is is speaking more about the times of the times of restoration is in the millennia. What's the millennia? The thousand year reign. As prophesied in Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 to 10 and Isaiah 65 verses 18 to 25. And it's referred to by Mashiach, by the Moshiach by the Messiah, by Christos, in Matthew 17, 11, and Matthew 19, and 28. Now, these are very important quotes. Once again, take this down, brothers and sisters. Isaiah 11, verses 1 to 10. Isaiah 65, verses 18 to verse 25. Matthew chapter 17, verse 11. And Matthew chapter 19, verse 28. We're going to try to go through each of these verses, but take a note of it and, and find the truth for yourself. It will be brought, it will be brought in by his coming back. This is, these are some of the notes that I've given in this particular recovery Bible. Now, here's the thing we have to understand, that Bamarinya right here, in the Amharic, let's highlight, let's highlight this word right here. It says, it says, Iskami ta desibete. Iskami ta desibete zemen. Now it says, until the time of renewing. It's the, it's the same basic idea as we have, you understand, know as we have in Hebrews. But now, this is now here pointing, you understand, know to what they call the second coming or the, the, not the coming as the lamb to the slaughter, but the second coming is the coming of Moa Anbesa Ze'ima Negeda Yehuda, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. So when it says, whom heaven must receive, so Christos, Jesus Christos, he ascended. Now, here's where a very interesting alien, E.T., an Ethiopian connection can be made concerning this ascension of Christ to the heavens and Christ's own Ethiopian connection. It says, whom heaven must indeed receive, heaven must Kabbalah him, heaven receive Yehoshua HaMoshiach until what's known as the times of the restoration of all things, the times of the restoration of all things, of which God, Ha Elohim, he spoke this through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. So if we would study the Nabiyat, the Nabim, we will find the many instances where he speaks of this time of restoration. Now we see this time of restoration being opened with the coronation of his imperial majesty. And let's show this right here. With the coronation of his imperial majesty. So it's that restoration of the true racial type to these divine archetypes of Kedistin Gilmaria, the black virgin, the black virgin mother, which is the antidote for the horror among black people in particular, among black women and the broken families and the baby mama dramas. And then for the men, Jesus Christos, he is that archetype, our black brother, our brother 
we can say from another planet. He said, my kingdom is not of this Arlem. And now in and through his imperial majesty do we have this particular fulfillment. You understand? So we have these these proofs, these evidences, these signs. He is imperial majesty steps on an unexploded bomb during the fascist aggression against that Davidic king, that David-like king, upon the throne of King David, which is the throne of Jehovah. And here, a coronation, a beautiful coronation scene of his imperial majesty is also, is also um, demonstrated here or is also pictured right here. So all this is real. This is real evidence. This is not just like pie in the sky, but this is the actual reality of the Adis Zemin, of this new age that we have two sets of scriptures you understand, in this particular study here that we feel hopefully will lay a foundation. Now, what we want to continue on is the connection with these, these stargates and opening up these spiritual stargates and being in alignment for the alignment. You see, being in the proper spiritual alignment. Now, we found this to be interesting and um, let's see if we can get this in. You see this right here? This is called the 231 gates. Now, it's interesting because we have it from Aleph, you understand, in the 22 to Tav. Aleph to Tav. The idea of Alpha, Omega, the, this complete cipher. Now, what's interesting is that the royal Amharic, the Amharic uh, Fidel, or the Amharic alphabet, the Ethiopic Fidel, the letters or the syllabi, you know, it's a symbolic, phonetic language. We have 33 primaries and seven different vowel orders. So when you now do the math, seven times 33, you come up to this very same number of 231. Now there's 231 gates. Now some say this is... Uh, what they call a uh, sacred geometry right here. But this is all ancient science. This is ancient tech. Now think about the link between these 230 gates and the Fidel. This is why he says he will turn to us a new language. So we begin in faith. And we begin with our faith base. Because when we begin with our faith base, we can build on a firm and a solid foundation. Another interesting aspect, let's bring this, this is another variation of this um, one right here. If you notice how we had put down here in this uh, area of the, of it, we put this, um, the symbol right here of um, this particular alignment. As you can see, this is this is part of the this is part of this alignment that we're coming up to. So this was revealed to us some 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 years ago, and now that more evidence and more information has been coming through, we took another another stock of this this particular symbology because it was even very, very cryptic to ourselves. Though we thought we understood some of the basic of it, there was still another aspect. Now, we've been thinking about um, May 5th, and there was a syzygy May 5th, and May 5th is um, Independence, Ethiopia Independence Day, where His Majesty returned five years to the very day. And that's, um, that's fact, that's truth, you know? He proved himself to be the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, not just using brute force, but using righteousness and wisdom to gain the victory. Now, this is a perfect um, um, sigil to really explain this part of the dark rift. And now this is the Horn of Africa right here. Now, of course, this is related and connected with um, 
the other the other image that we had shown you previous before, and we'll want to do we'll get to that one, but let's while we have the time right here, let's show this right here. Now, this right here is His Majesty's Bible Society logo. We have a clearer, but we can use this right here. His Majesty's Bible Society logo. Now, remember, His Majesty 1914 brought the first printing presses into Ethiopia. And he named that printing press the Burhanana Salam, or the Light and Peace, as well as a, a newspaper um, a certain periodic, a periodical called the Kashate Burhan, and the Kashate in the Ethiopic, the Gutas, it means the, the revealing of light, and and also the 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 newspaper of the empire of Ethiopia, known as the Addis Zemin, which means the the new age. So we begin to see that there's a link from 1914, which the so-called Jehovah Witness, if we go back to some of their literature, they made a lot of sense. The only part they did not reveal is the true presence of Christ that was then in the world and in manifestation in the person of Haile Selassie. But if you no doubt recall, it was the Jehovah Witness who was speaking, and some of them still speak about 19, 1914. Now, what we have here from His Majesty's autobiography, and it's chapter 12 on page 67, it says from 1914 right, onward, we purchased from our own, our, our private money to book printing presses and many books in Gutters and in Amharic with interpretation were printed. The entire people therefore derived much benefit from reading what they could buy at a low price. A weekly paper called Light and Peace or Burhanana Salam and a monthly paper called Kishate Burhan, Revealer of the Light. So we see a focus with the light and with the and with the yeah, okay and with the illumination in and through the teachings of his imperial majesty. Now we have to be be diligent because um you know the these this truth that's being revealed, you know saying it's half of the story. You know saying it completes it completes the cipher, you understand? And we pray that you'll be able, brothers and sisters, to meditate on this and to do your own study and to, and to find that truth for yourself through this, and this will be an important part of, of your building blocks, building up and building a strong foundation. So um, as we continue, we want to touch on some related uh, some related. Um, matters as well and we're going to go into this a little bit a little bit um a little bit more so so my brothers and sisters um stay tuned more to come concerning the Adis Zemin of the King of Kings and his Christ Getachina Benhanatachin Jesus Christos